it's more than likely that you've heard someone accuse someone else of making a logical fallacy, as I have done in my previous video and I'm sure in any other videos I'll make. What I wanted to explain in this video is exactly what a logical fallacy is and what it means when someone commits one. Firstly, I'm going to go over a few definitions and concepts to make sure it's understood what a logical argument is. Briefly, a logical argument is a series of statements or propositions used to provide reason to persuade someone to accept a claim or conclusion as true. Here on YouTube, you can find a plentiful array of a variety of different logical arguments to support virtually any position you can imagine. Some of the more popular types of logical arguments are those that try to affirm or deny the existence of God. A few of the most well-known arguments are the Kalam cosmological argument, the problem from evil, and the ontological argument for God. Each of these arguments draw a conclusion from the premises through logical reasoning. These are examples of valid logical arguments though their soundness may be up for debate. What's the difference between a sound argument and a valid argument? Well, I'm glad you asked. Validity and soundness are two ways of describing a logical argument's worth. So let's start with a couple definitions. A deductive argument is said to be valid if and only if it takes a form that makes it impossible for the premises to be true and the conclusion to nevertheless be false. Otherwise, a deductive argument is said to be invalid. A deductive argument is sound if and only if it is both valid and all of its premises are actually true, otherwise a deductive argument is unsound. Now to ensure this is clear, let's take a look at a simple example. This is Rover and he's going to be the basis of our sample argument. So for clarity, I'm going to present this argument in what's called a logical syllogism, in which I will individually present each of my premises and then the conclusion. So here we go. Premise 1. Any animal that barks is a cat. Premise 2. Rover is an animal that barks. Conclusion. Therefore, Rover is a cat. Now, of course, this argument is clearly wrong, but let's analyze it for validity and soundness. Firstly, let's consider validity. If we assume the truth of the premises, the conclusion logically follows. Therefore, this argument is valid. On the other hand, premise 1 is demonstrably false in reality. Therefore, the argument is rendered unsound. Now that these aspects of a logical argument should be a little more clear, now we can take a look at what a logical fallacy is. Roughly speaking, a fallacy is a kind of error in reasoning. Fallacies should not be persuasive, but they often are. Fallacies may be created unintentionally, or they may be created intentionally in order to deceive other people. The vast majority of commonly identified fallacies involve arguments, although some involve explanations or definitions or other products of reasoning. So, in essence, a logical fallacy indicates that the logical reasoning within an argument is invalid. This is essentially saying that the route taken between the premises to get to the conclusion is faulty, which renders the argument devoid of meaning. It's good to keep in mind that a logical fallacy typically pertains only to the path of reasoning within an argument. It does not address the premises, nor does it address the conclusion. So when an argument contains a logical fallacy, it only indicates that the conclusion is not logically supported by the premises. Further, when an argument is rendered invalid or unsound, it does not mean that the conclusion is rendered false. It's always possible to arrive at a correct conclusion, even with erroneous reasoning. It would be similar to working through a complex math problem incorrectly, but still somehow arriving at the correct answer. Alright, so I'd like to wrap up this video with a few examples of some commonly committed fallacies. Of course Elvis is still alive. If he wasn't, then there wouldn't be so many people who believe it. This is the classic appeal to popularity or argument ad populum. This kind of argument attempts to affirm the conclusion through sheer popularity of belief. This is fallacious because just because a lot of people believe it doesn't mean it's necessarily true. Person A, no Dungeons and Dragons player ever makes a halfling character. Person B. Wait, I played a halfling cleric. Person A, well, no true D&D player would ever make a halfling anyway. This is a popular fallacy known as the no true Scotsman fallacy. And this is a fallacy because one can just arbitrarily declare that another member of a group is not a true member of a group without any discernible objective means of doing so. This is probably most often encountered when Christians of different denominations point at each other and say, they're not true Christians. Finally, I told you a million times not to throw the ball in the house because you'll break something. I see that the window has been broken, so you must have thrown the ball. This is what's known as the affirming the consequent fallacy. And if you couldn't obviously see the problem with this, just because the window's broken doesn't necessarily mean a ball was thrown to break that window. 
This fallacy is easiest to spot when analyzing the structure of an argument. This works off a classic if-then kind of statement, in which the then part is affirmed to conclude that the if part, the condition, occurred. This is fallacious. So I hope this clears up any confusion if there was any. If not, please comment below. Additionally, I'm going to provide a link in the description box below to the site I typically reference for logical fallacies. And that will conclude this short video. Thank you for watching.